Now on Denver 7 News at 7 a.m. on Local 3, the man Denver police say forced them to fire into a crowd downtown, injuring innocent people, will face a judge today. Plus, the same self-defense laws apply to police officers and civilians. This morning, we're hearing from the woman who is responsible for deciding if any of the officers should be punished. The cost to buy a home is going down in Colorado, the new reality sellers face. And the Broncos hit the field tomorrow for day one of training camp. The players tell us what they're excited for. To see the fans screaming and cheering like it's day one, uh, it makes you want to go even harder. They, yep. want, they want to meet you, right? right? Yeah. We have to remember, <laughs> these are going to be tough workouts for yes. the players, but you know the fans are going to love it. Yeah. Thanks for joining us this morning. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Nicole Brady. We could see more rain again today. We had that little bit of a break from the rain yesterday, Lisa. I've gotten used to it almost every afternoon. Yeah, and you know, we had so much heat too yeah. here through mid-July. It's been nice to see a bit of a change. Some cooler weather today. Lots of sunshine out there right now. We're in the mid to upper 60s here in town. Winds out of the southwest at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Take a look at our dog walking forecast. We're going to be in the 60s here through early morning. A chance for some thunderstorms this afternoon. 87 degrees between about 4 and 5 o'clock. So you'll hit uh, highs right around normal. We're typically close to 90 this time of year. Low 80s near Castle Rock and Parker 70s as you get up into the foothills and mountains. There will be a chance for a little severe weather here in green. It covers a bigger portion of eastern Colorado now just east of Denver, but we've had some issues out at the airport with afternoon thunderstorms and we may see a few more there again today. I'll show you what it looks like on Futurecast coming up and up in that northeast corner. We do have some pretty thick fog. So on I 76 you'll have limited visibility up through Julesburg getting on up to Nebraska. Right now you're looking at the Grand Avenue Bridge here in Glenwood. This is moving fine on 82 all the way down to Aspen to or from Carbondale. Uh, but we all, but we do have a, cl a closure of I-70, the eastbound side between 114 and 116. Uh, the mile marker 116 would be right there in Glenwood, uh, and the other one would be just uh, on the west side of Glenwood. This is Evans, right over top of I-25. Southbound is heading that way. Northbound is heading that way from Air Tracker 7. You see the pedestrian bridge going over to the light rail station there, but it's moving along fairly well. The cloud cover is helping us, giving us a bit of a break to that south side. Most of the heavy traffic, as you can see on the map, is up on that north side of town. I-25, I-76, 270, all really Real busy for your morning commute, but no other major problems for us as you're making your way around town right now. Thank you, Jason. Well, for the first time, the man Denver police say flashed a gun at them, forcing officers to fire into a crowd in Lodo will appear in court. Three police shot at Jordan Wadi, injuring him and six innocent bystanders back on July 17th. Wadi now faces a number of charges, including menacing assault and possession of a weapon by a previous offender. He was on parole at the time of the shooting. Denver 7 will be in court when he appears at 930 this morning. Denver's district attorney is also in the process of investigating the officers who fired at Wadi. I sat down with DA Beth McCann. She told me she cannot talk about a pending officer involved shooting investigation, but I wanted to know about the process of investigating an officer involved shooting and how she decides if it's justified or not. She said it starts with her going to the scene or an assistant DA uh, will do the same. They look at the lighting at the time of the shooting, uh, where the officers, suspects and any victims were standing and the physical evidence. Uh, they do listen to all the interviews with officers and they can suggest questions to ask them. I also asked her, though, about the importance of police body camera video since we are seeing that so much more these days. The public thinks they know it all now and everything that's happened. How much comes down to that body camera video? The body camera is typically very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes not at all because it, they wear it on their chest and if they have their guns out, um, sometimes you can't see anything. Um, you can hear, but um, in some cases, the body camera is very, very helpful because you can see lots of things. Often though it's dark, it's jumbled, there's a lot going on, and um, it depends again on the individual case. If you get a good, you know, I mean we've had them where you can literally see the gun coming out and the police can slow down, you know, they can slow the frames down so you can get a much clearer sense of what the officer was seeing. 
Yeah, and uh, again, she can't talk about the Lodo case right now. She did tell me, though, it'll probably take a while uh, to come to the outcome of that. Now, Beth McCann has been the DA for five and a half years, and in that time, she has never charged any officer with a shooting, uh, in a shooting, that is. She told me she has charged some police officers with assault and other nonviolent crimes. In the case of officer-involved shootings, when the investigation finishes, McCann always holds a public meeting to explain why the officer is not being charged. Uh, one of those is happening tonight from 5 to 6 p.m. She'll be talking about the investigation into the shooting death of Colton Wagner last summer. Police say he turned a gun on officers at a park and the officers shot him. He died. Uh, McCann said the officers followed their training and stopped a bad situation from becoming worse. You can learn more about that particular case and get the link to tonight's meeting on the DA's website. Just click on news. Community members protesting the Lodo police shooting have said they want a civilian police accountability council. Denver already has one. It's called the Citizen Oversight Board. We are, you know, regular old people, uh, you know, having regular old jobs in, in the daytime. Um, and we're all really passionate about making sure that the police are um, acting in a manner appropriate with their role um, as uh, you know, folks who are supposed to keep us safe and protect us and also serve the public. The board chair who you just saw there was expecting to get her first briefing on the Lodo shooting yesterday, more than a week after the shooting. The board has virtual public meetings on the first and third Friday of every month. Well, this morning we are pushing for answers into Sunday's deadly police shooting in Inglewood. Officers killed a 22-year-old man and then hours later announced that they had arrested another man. Denver 7's Christian Lopez has a look at some of the big questions that we have for police. We have asked police several questions to clarify exactly what happened, but we still have not gotten an answer from them. We know they were responding to a disturbance among family members. This was at a home along West Bellevue and South Grove Street. When they got there, officers say someone in the home started shooting at them. And that's when police shot and killed the 22 year old. No officers were injured. Police announced they arrested 29 year old Philip Blankenship for his role in shooting at police officers. He is being charged with criminal attack attempt first degree murder. We've been pushing for answers to see if the 22 year old who was killed actually shot at officers or if it was the 29 year old who was arrested or both. Police would not give us any additional information because the investigation is still ongoing. Reporting this morning, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Meanwhile, Commerce City Police are looking for three suspects in a deadly shooting. This happened just after 2 a.m. yesterday morning outside of a home near 54th and Layden. Police say a group of three men confronted two others before shooting and killing one of them. Police say the suspects then stole the victim's pickup truck, which is a maroon 2003 Chevy Silverado with an extended cabin lift kit. A popular spot to cool off, Big Soda Lake at Bear Creek Lake Park is now closed to swimmers after officials found toxic algae in the water. Paddle boards, canoes, and kayaks are still allowed for now, but people have to limit their contact with the water and rinse their boards immediately after getting out. Blue-green algae can cause illnesses in both humans and animals. Well, the Broncos have a new head coach, a new quarterback, and tomorrow you'll have your first chance to see them in action. Yeah, training camp starts with the gates opening at 9 a.m. You'll want to get there even earlier to get a good spot, though. Outside linebacker Bradley Chubb says he's looking forward to the hype he'll get from the crowd during those long, hot practices. You know, practice could get tiring, and on day 10, you might not want to be out there, but to see the fans screaming and cheering like it's day one, uh, it makes you want to go even harder and give them something, you know what I'm saying, to look forward to when the season comes. So it's definitely a, a jolt of energy, and I'm excited to have them out there and be able to interact with them again. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, there will be 14 practices free and open to fans, and we'll be there tomorrow morning to show you the action ahead of time and then in the evenings after every camp. To see the full schedule, go to thedenverchannel.com. You'll be out there tomorrow morning. Yes, yeah, hopefully Lisa get and to I meet both. Russell. Uh, yeah. If he shows up early enough, I hope <laughs> yes. so. Yeah, give him a high five. <laughs> All right. Well, Russell Wilson and his wife, Sierra, made an appearance at Park Meadows Mall last night. Yeah, that was all uh, fun and games. A big party out at Park Meadows Mall for the grand opening of their clothing store, the House of LRNC, which stands for Love, Respect and Care. It is now open. It's their fourth location for their fashion venture. And Sierra says her husband is very involved in the process. 
And Russ, he kind of downplays his input, but he has incredible vision. He's very particular about the detail for men and how the shoes, down to how the shoes fit, the details of the button placement, the details of how a jacket fits around the waist. All those things matter to us. Yeah, always uh, red carpet ready, it feels <laughs> like. Uh, there was music, dancing, and of course there is clothing for men, women, and kids. Coloradans who owe on student loans might be breathing a sigh of relief this morning why services will not be breathing down your neck for a while as you get a break to pay it all back. And nearly $800 million could be yours tonight. The Mega Millions jackpot drawing has nearly doubled how one company is giving its employees a shot at winning the grand prize.